review is entitled Emergency War Surgery. This book was originally written by NATO in 1988. This is the revised version that was published in 1992 by Desert Publications. There is another version of this book out that was published in 2004 as well as one published in 2011 by Walter Reed Army Medical Center Borden Institute. Emergency war surgery is a comprehensive introduction to the standard operating procedures of wartime medicine. It covers a wide range of topics associated with medical operations during wartime and battle wound statistics. These topics are based upon providing surgeons and medical personnel with the knowledge and skills to handle platoon and division size patients. This book is not emergency war surgery for dummies. If you aren't a surgeon, this book will have little value to you in a medical crisis that requires surgery. The book states that it was written for young, inexperienced military surgeons. However, it does contain other information for the non-surgeon on topics such as how to make a makeshift hospital, triage unit construction, aircraft evacuations, and landing zone awareness. If you do have some medical professional training, this book may provide you with some supporting knowledge of performing surgical needs during disastrous situations such as wartime. Or if you don't, then it could provide you with some supporting information in construction and setup of medical facilities, triage, but for the most part, a lot of the data seems outdated. The title page um, shows the original publication date of 1988 and the revi revised date of 1992 by Desert Publications and it also has a warning at the bottom that states the publisher Desert Publications produces this book for informational purposes and under no circumstances advises, encourages, or approves the use of this material in any manner. The foreword page describes various battles throughout history and the wounded soldiers that resulted from these battles. You then have a preface, a prologue, and an acknowledgments page. The contents section includes 33 chapters and associated appendices that span across 446 pages in the book. The chapters include topics such as Missile caused wounds, injuries associated with burns, cold temperature, blasts, chemicals, thermonuclear warfare, responses of the body to wounding, infections, sorting of casualties, aeromedical evacuation, wounds and injuries of the hand, eye, ear, neck, and chest, injuries of the spinal column, and cord injuries and so on. The book provides the reader with knowledge of what types and kinds of injuries and wounds would prevail during a wartime situation. Even if you aren't a surgeon, you could still possibly benefit from some of the information. A mobilization of injuries, how the body responds to different infections, um, and if you diagnose a particular injury or infection, what else is likely to occur if you don't fix it. Uh, but again, a lot of the textual descriptions are from a surgeon's point of view. The book also covers different types of drugs and their uses on a worldwide spectrum. It covers drugs from the United States and abroad. However, some of these drugs may be outdated due to the age of this book and the invent of more modern medication. The book does not give a step-by-step -step account of how to perform surgery, and probably no book should do that. Throughout the book, there's a lot of medical terminology used in the book that is indicative of typical medical texts. It's not easy to understand the meaning for someone that isn't a surgeon or have any formal medical training. There aren't really that many photos in the book. The ones that are in there are typically associated with statistical analyses of mass casualties during past wars and the associated treatments and whether they worked well or didn't. 
There are some illustrations in the back of the book that show methods of accomplishing certain tasks, such as bandaging wounds or broken bones. But they're really very remedial illustrations and they don't show much detail, certainly not enough to be used as an accurate reference. You could find much better illustrations in a basic first aid guide. For example, this illustration shows draining the abdomen. As you can see, it's not very detailed and the illustration is very remedial. If you're purchasing this book for use during a disastrous situation, it wouldn't provide you with much support because you can't always depend upon having a helicopter at the ready to evacuate the wounded or a hospital for that matter. Emergency War Surgery provides the reader with a specific skill set based on their first-hand knowledge of medical practices during wartime. It also provides the non-medical reader with some basic information on how to provide support for makeshift hospitals, triage units, how to prepare landing zones for aircraft evacuations, and other military-specific operations. Although this book is an interesting novelty, it provides little value to the average person who is relying on it for sustainment of medical needs. Emergency War Surgery 2011 published by Walter Reed Army Medical Center Ditch Medicine 1993 published by Hugh Coffey This book is widely available online and at popular online retailers. It's also been seen at local bookstores and on the gun show circuit. It's available in paperback format for around $20. There are new versions of this book that were published in 2004 and 2011. The 2004 version can be downloaded for free in PDF format. Please see the description below for details. Emergency War Surgery received two solid stars. It's mostly under par, lacks substantial modern research, deficient in clarity, outdated, organization and explanations of the topics need further information for the reader to easily understand the concepts. This book is generally not recommended. Thanks for watching the Survival Bookshelf. Stay tuned for more.